Michelle and Josh Johnson, joined by my co-host, fellow stand-up comedian Logan Nielsen. Logan, how you doing, buddy? I am doing all right, man. How are you? I'm doing okay, man. I did a I did a school um, show at a school last night, and it was it was really good. Students were great. Like and an elementary, or everybody was just really dope. Well, okay. I mean, you just said school. Everyone knows yeah, about college. Yeah, I'm just goofing. Gosh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. But just in case, I don't. I don't need those problems of someone hitting me up and being like, "Our elementary school would love to have a clown come and <laughs> do his thing." You know, bring some a, joy to the children. I wonder what an elementary would pay for <laughs> for some lunchtime stand up. I think you have to ask what they pay the teachers, and then go lower from there <laughs> Shit, I'm, going, I'm going higher from there oh yeah I'm, I'm giving them a break okay i'm gonna i'm gonna do for a, a teacher's day pay plus tips that's mm-hmm. right i'm hoping I'm, <laughs> i want them to encourage the children <laughs> to leave tips <laughs> i uh okay so this is my thing i i try to have a real day of it, right? Um, mm-hmm. Because the the actual show wasn't going to be until eight, okay. and the train from New York to DC is about what three hours or something. Okay. And so in my head, I was like, you know what I'm going to do? Yeah. I'm going to make like a full day out of it. And and if Sally and I weren't going to Australia, I would have tried to get like you know, Sally to come, but I know she had errands to run and to pack and stuff like that. Right. Um, but basically I got up early, went to the station, made the train by like five minutes, which is my favorite. I love that so much. I love like when you know you're going to make it, but you've also really cut it close to where there's no waiting. It's like, it's the best. It's so oh, good. I don't That's... I don't know that to me, I understand what you're saying to me though. That last five minutes leaves, leaves too much opportunity for something to go wrong. And if yeah. one thing goes wrong, then you are late. You have missed this train now. It's kind of how, so, it's yeah. kind of how I feel. I mean, train, the Amtrak is less. So I've had less trouble with it. Like mm-hmm. if you show up, you know, if you cut it close, but like, you know what it is? I don't know. This is my thing. So yeah. I left, it takes 30 minutes to get there and okay. then probably another 10 to get to my track from where I got off at the train. So 40 minutes total. Okay. And I left with about an hour to get there. So I had this 20 minute pad, right? Mm-hmm. And and at one point the train was stopped. And at another point, um, I was like, should I get some snacks? Should I not? And so it wasn't a five minutes of desperation. It was a five minutes of like, by the time I sat down in my seat, there were still five minutes before the the train took off. So when I say despair, I don't mean like I almost missed it. I probably made it by ten minutes, but okay, you know, you, you had you had five minutes to indulge. I had five minutes to watch people panic. You know, <laughs> I had five minutes to really yeah, feel yeah. like I was better than everyone. <laughs> I'm here so early. Yeah. And <laughs> didn't I plan ahead like a good boy? <laughs> and the train ride over, because I mentioned this when we were doing our virtual live show um, for the for the patrons and stuff. That we just did, by the way. And we do every month. Mm-hmm. Come on uh, through. Here's a little ad, huh? There you and go. And sure enough, my man, this is, okay. So I ended up sitting facing the other direction that we are traveling, right? Because you know how okay. the the way that the seats are set up, you can sit facing forward or facing back. And some people don't like to face back because it makes them dizzy and stuff, you know? I am I am one of those people. Yeah. And depending so, if I'm depending on the mood. Anyway, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, you're good. But I'm I'm facing backwards and I don't mind. It's 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 fine. I've never actually had I've been very blessed where I don't get dizzy easily it takes a lot for me to get dizzy even though i'm an easy faint so like like i'm either awake or i'm not oh see and then i'm an easy dizzy hard faint okay wow if you put us together we make one awake person or one horribly vulnerable person (laughs) yeah yeah someone who is both spinning and asleep yeah yeah just one either one very healthy person or one very sick person yeah a lot of head injuries from all the falling and so 
I'm the way where I'm sitting, I have a clear shot at the bathroom, which in, uh, in my mind is going to be a problem. Like <laughs> there was there was some there was some <laughs> chance to move because uh-huh. whenever you're leaving New York, I can't remember what the first stop is, but I think the first stop is still New York. So I guess if you ever wanted yeah. to steal a, a like a whole ride, you could probably get away with it because they don't start checking tickets until you're actually headed to um to in Jersey, right? Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm on the train for an easy like 9 minutes with one stop before they actually start checking me right. and stuff. And and once they check you, I don't know what the process is if you can move and just bring your ticket with you that they put at your seat, but I don't like to just in case, yeah. you know, conductor passes by and it's like, I don't remember you. Where's that ticket from? And then I got to be like, it's from you, bro. Like you, like, please remember me. I know there's a whole train and you do this like your entire day for 10 hours, but please remember me. Right. That That is a weird, like the only times I'd ever ridden Amtrak. It's only been a handful of times. So it's like a thing I don't do often enough. I always get nervous that like, I'm going to fuck up something with just handing them the thing or scanning. Now you can just scan on the phone. And I did that last time. I'm like, Oh, but surely still something will be wrong. Mm-hmm. Cause they usually put like the little ticket above you. And then I'm like, well, what if that falls? And they're going to be like, you got to get off. Yeah. I always have, a little panic for that, yeah. and it's it's the it's the oldest form of transportation I use. It's also because I don't ride horses. Even if something really bad happened and they didn't remember you, and your ticket fell, and it went under a seat, and all the, they still want to take your money, so they would Absolutely. still let you buy another ticket that oh, would probably be only be more affordable now that you're closer. <laughs> And it might just be like a whatever you have in your pockets. We'll yeah. let you stay on this train. Listen, if you want to stay on this train, you're gonna to have to pay us nineteen dollars because yeah, we are exactly. almost at your destination. Yeah. By the way, sorry if you're hearing a lot of clacking and walking around. My my dog's getting restless. She she I won't I won't I won't dig in this next. We're talking about we're talking about trains, and you know I love talking about trains. But she just had <laughs> surgery. She just had surgery, so I brought all my gear upstairs to hang out with her. But she mm-hmm. walks around in a tall hardwood floor up here, so you can. You can probably hear clickety clack of of beagles walking around on, a, yeah. on my mic here. So anyway, so that's why I'm looking around. I'm darting around like someone sneaking up on me, but I'm just trying to keep track of my my healing canine. Anyway, mm-hmm. sorry. Go ahead. Trains. Yeah, heal up, Maddie. All right, prayers up. Okay, bro. She's she's got some gnarly scars. She's she got, <laughs> bro. She got cut up. Jeez. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, they had to, you know, I guess, sorry, we are talking about now, but she had, no, she had a big old tumor on her side. She had to get uh, oh, cut wow. out. Well, and they even said, too, like, it had, it had grown enough that some muscle had gotten intertwined with it, which was okay. They could easily do that. But they said when it heals, there's a good chance she'll just have a divot. That she'll just have, she'll have a little golf fairway divot <laughs> in I, her side where it'll, she got a little speed bump. <laughs> I'm excited for you to take Maddie to a dog park and just her talking to the other dogs and being like, so were you in Nam or what happened? Like, Bro, she's been through some shit. She's had, because she had three different bladder surgeries, I mean, years ago. Mm-hmm. She's had this this lump we got removed. She had it removed four years ago. Mm-hmm. And they said it might grow back, and it did. Uh, and then she had a second one in her neck that, they, that we took out too, and we also took off a cyst on her back that had gotten bigger. That one wasn't cancerous, but they're like, "Hey, if we got her under," so she's just got a big old like her whole back is shaved in like a weird like jigsaw oh, puzzle, man. basically. Yeah. And then her neck shaved to it. I was telling you before we got on mic, like it's hard because then we can't we can't really put a cone on her because then it will rub against the one on her neck, and also she could still scratch that with her foot. Mm-hmm. So I just been putting shirts on my dog, and she doesn't really like wearing shirts. So I do get a lot of stares. There's a lot of just staring at me. Yeah. Of like, what have you done? Yeah. What have you done to my life? You know this isn't right. Yeah. This All isn't right. right. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. I, I'll, I'll, <laughs> did you see the picture? I'll, here, I'm gonna send to you right now. Do you see the picture when I first got her home? I posted it on Instagram. You'll you'll just appreciate the the fucking look she's given me. I'm gonna text it to you right now. Because I've never seen a dog be like why so much in in a picture just look at this fucking demon stare that she gives me oh you guys send that to the people 
you gotta you gotta put that in the show notes <laughs> It's it's on my Instagram. If you go to my Instagram, you'll see it. But it is it is a I will destroy you stare. Wow. I've never heard a dog curse before, but she is right now <laughs> in my head when I look at that picture. Well, it's because we picked her up for having her gone all day and then immediately put a shirt on her. And she's like, first you do this and now I got to wear clothes, which you know I fucking don't like. Yeah. This whole day has been unnatural. And I, I used to be like I you. used to be a wolf. Yeah. I just assume they think that anytime we do anything dumb to them, they just in their heads go, I used to hunt. I like I the to- idea that there's like hotep dogs that are like, see, what happened was the white man, because we used to be wolves, right? And then the white man came along and tried to get us to push him, to pull him, to push him in his work. So then his work became our work. All right. Do you hear me? You do you whoop, whoop, do you hear me? Do you whoop, whoop, do you hear me? All right. So I'm not doing what he's when he says sit, I stand. When he says stay, I go. All right. I'm not really about that. Okay. And best believe anybody step to me, he can get bit. All right. You're going to have to put me down. But if you put me down, best believe you won't put all of us down. They'll never put all of us down. We didn't land in the dog park. Dog park landed on us. Let me tell you something right now. Because because that's that's the thing with, with dogs as well, where anytime people act like um like they've like they've been the deciding factor in the full change in the dog's life. I'm like, all right, yeah, but as an animal, it mm-hmm. was going to get along. On it right. on its own, like like in some form, yeah. You know I mean, like for every breed outside of the breeds that we've completely made up, you know, there's a couple ones with right. the snouts that can't breathe, and we did mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. That was yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. I think everything else, though, ah, uh, oh uh, no, we, we 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 ruined them. Like anytime you see a dog that's like deeply deeply especially as a puppy i'm talking about like puppies deeply deeply out of shape that was you oh yeah you know no, I, mean? I i they I, love I don't... to burn calories as a resting state <laughs> yeah <laughs> their favorite thing to do is burn calories i'm i'm not delusional because there are some i know people who are just like you know oh you know my dog has this trait because they're you know uh, because of their previous owner blah blah blah, blah all this stuff and I know I had her since she was a puppy. It's a little different. But I know every every one of my dog's bad behaviors, absolutely my fault. I know 100% is my fault. by Just by nature of just like, she only been around. I've been the only authority figure she's ever known. So clearly, anything shitty she does, I, mm-hmm. didn't, I didn't handle or didn't care enough to handle. Mm-hmm. You know, the long time where it was just me and her living in Chicago. She... She basically had a, an apartment to herself like half the time. Yeah, free reign. You know? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, she she was basically a human adult. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't do anything to to curb any bad behavior. So I'm like, yeah, no, she she sucks, and it's my fault. But she's old now, so. Eh. I love when a dog does a horrific thing, and then they run up to you like you're gonna be proud. Like I did it for you. You know what I mean? Like when a dog just runs up to you with like a full pigeon in its mouth and it's like, aren't you proud <laughs> that I yeah. that I brought this diseased animal back to you? <laughs> well, that's why I love she's so bad at catching stuff. The one time she did catch something, she just looked surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I think I told it on the show for but she caught a possum and she was just like she, and you could see in her eyes the thought was, I don't know what to do now. So I've, it's never gotten this far. Last night, Chance saw a raccoon, which is literally just built like him. Like he's a fat Sheba. And it's just, it's just him. It's going to be about the size of him. Yeah. Yeah. And just different colors, but still, it was trying to get into a bag. And Sally told me he saw it and just was amped and was like, (laughs) was, was like really talking all of that good shit from across the fence. Like, (laughs) Was that his first raccoon he's seen that you know? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's it's funny when you see a dog see their first something. Because mm-hmm. like yeah, either they'll freak out, but like when Maddie sees something for the first, like when when she like saw a possum for the first time, she just looked at it and wasn't upset. 
she like it just looked like her world collapsed a little bit because mm-hmm. she learned of a new thing. Yeah, he and does the seem just to look to her. Yeah, exactly. He seems to be upset that they are alive. He would love to unalive them, like <laughs> yeah. at every turn. Right. Yeah. He Maddie doesn't have that as much. She doesn't. She likes to chase, but she doesn't. If something stops running, she will just like she had a rabbit one time that she. I think I've told this before too, but she snuck up on it and was like six inches away. The rabbit just didn't run, mm-hmm. and then she just looked at me and she's like, "I don't," and then just walked away. <laughs> Because it didn't run, she's like, "No, this is this is wrong. So this seems like a trap now." <laughs> yeah, yeah. This rabbit knows something that I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, anyway. if I come for this rabbit, I feel like something bad is gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> You're on the other side of him. Is he holding something? Do yeah. he have a weapon? <laughs> yeah. Is he holding something behind his back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it seems Uh-oh. to be too calm about this. Anyway, sorry. Trains. We just we haven't had dog talk in a while, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's fine. It's and fine. And this has consumed my fucking weekend, this surgery. I'm with you. I I've barely totally slept. Understand. Yeah. I've barely slept. Mm-hmm. Because she she won't she won't lay still. Mm-hmm. It's not that I haven't slept out of worry. It's cause she wakes up and then sprints while drugged up still on anesthesia. <laughs> That's Friday night after she had her surgery was just like Waking up and just trying to sprint to nowhere. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. It does sound like the opposite of what anesthesia should do. It never used to affect her that way. But the last couple of times she's had stuff, because she had a tooth removed last year, and she did the same thing. It's like she's sleeping, sleeping, and then she just wakes up and acts like there's something urgent she has to go do. Yeah. Which there isn't, because she's a dog. You don't know that, though. Maybe maybe there's unfinished bones and unfinished business outside the yard, you know? Maybe. Because it does. It seems like she just starts walking places like, I'm supposed to do something. And then she stops and she's like, no. No, that's right. I have no responsibilities. <laughs> I'll, I'll go lay back down. I forgot I'm a dog. Yeah. Um, but basically. Anyway, college I, gig. Trains. Ju- yeah. Choo-choo's in colleges. I was seated uh, diagonal from the bathroom, which I knew was probably going to be a problem. I wasn't sure how, but I knew eventually something would happen. And yeah, and I was... You're, gonna, you're at least going to smell something. Yeah. And I was across also from the dining cart. And so a part of me was like, man, maybe I should just spend some time in the, in the dining cart. But my seat, I don't know if this was a malfunction or if I was just lucky or maybe Amtrak stepped up their game. But my seat went back just a little bit more than normal. Ooh. And as soon as it went back and no one ever came to sit next to me, I was like, then I'm in it. Like, why would I move? Life is good, yeah. you know? So anyway. Shit, I might stay on for an extra stop past <laughs> past DC. I might just keep going. Maybe I'll end up in Virginia. I don't care. <laughs> when the seat's this good, why get off? And eventually it happened. There was a there was a guy who you could tell I heard his click clopping from down the row, right? No, oh, no, no. Th- no, this guy. You said that right after Maddie walked by, so I thought you were saying you heard her. No, 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 no. Clopping. This dude, I don't know what type of nice shoes he had on, but they were the fanciest flip flops I've ever heard that were dress shoes. Because it was like I've pop, got a pop, tap pop, recital. Yeah, it no, it was it, dude. It was legitimately like, how are these shoes making this much noise? And then he's running down the aisle, and you can tell he's trying to hold it together, but he. Gets to the bathroom and someone's in there and the impatience because where the uh, seats are, mm-hmm. there is the handicap seating, right? Right. And so that means that since there's no one there in a wheelchair or anything, there's just room. And so he's pacing. <laughs> <laughs> This man is pacing back and forth on the train, and then and then eventually the person gets out, and and he he goes in, and I I forgot all about he him. Punches him in the mouth. <laughs> yeah, he took too long. <laughs> I truly forget all about this dude. Okay, I'm trying to remember what I was watching. I think I was I think I was watching um, Emily in Paris. Nah, never. I. <laughs> 
dang, I can't remember. But it was, I was just watching a show on Netflix. The show gets okay. done. And then maybe... A million Paris is on Netflix. I'm maybe saying. two or three minutes after the show gets done, <laughs> this guy walks out and just hands in pockets, stands near the bathroom, leaned back. Like, he, he looked like the only thing he was missing was a cigarette to smoke. Like, he just barely made it. Like, he just... Like his whole life flashed before his eyes or something. Because the level of relaxed that he was when he walked out. Oh, it was relaxed. Okay. Yeah. I, th- I thought it was hands in pockets, like shameful. No, no, no. I saw like hands in pockets, head down, being like, why do I, how do I live like this? It's hard to see someone more on top of the world than he was. Oh, good for it, him. It's, you know? it's rare. It's rare good that you him. see someone so content that he leaned his back on the wall. Wow, so just, unencumbered. So unencumbered. And then he just clip clopped back to wherever his seat was. And I was like, man. Like he's a horse. What a what a what ecstasy must this man have experienced? Because a part of me was like, maybe he used the bathroom, or maybe he just did drugs in there. Because it was Yeah. It maybe was such a change maybe. in him. <laughs> it was truly such a change. And it also took so long that I'm like all right. Yeah, because you, you said you're watching a show. Yeah. Uh, 30 minute or 45 minute. No, 30 minute. Episode? Yeah. 30, 30 minute. Okay. Because I'd say it's depending if it was like an hour long drama. Yeah. Then like he was getting after it. Yeah. Legit in the bathroom for what had to be 33 minutes. And that's that's a little too long. I mean, he had time to do both. <laughs> Poop and heroin. Is yeah. what you're saying? <laughs> Neither one of them take that long. <laughs> I mean, if you want to enjoy them. Nobody boo-boos a whole episode of Seinfeld with the commercials and then walks out happy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it definitely doesn't walk out because usually if you do it that long, your legs are asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so it takes out. you a second. And you got to stand there at least being like, ooh, getting the tingles out. I, when I was on the Amtrak, though, the food offered... Okay. Is not. Well, that's the end of it. Is not. Is not food. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've never, I've never looked in the, this specifically in the dining car. In the dining car where you buy the food that okay. they provide. Because I've never looked in there. I've never seen. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do they got? What's what are what's on the the fake menu? There's a microwave pizza that I'm pretty sure is like a one that you get in a grocery store. So I guess some people would consider that real, but I feel like because you don't control existing the microwave. And, existing and real are different things. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's not a real pizza and you're not going to no. feel good, right? No, I've had those. They're not good no matter what. They're, yeah. They're, they, at best, they are there. And the person, to their credit, the person that works the Amtrak train that is firing them up for you and everything in the microwave is mm-hmm. following the instructions. But the instructions, this is what people don't understand about microwavable foods that are kind of faux foods, is that you have to come up with your Fouts. own instructions. You know? You have yeah. to tinker. You do. Diligently. And you have to understand your microwave. You have to understand your dinner that you're having through that TV dinner. And you have to know, okay, am I a low wattage? Am I a medium? If I'm a medium, is it three minutes or is it three and a half? Okay. Mm -hmm. Some people break it down to such a science that they'll put that microwave on 325 and have whatever their TV dinner is coming out perfect. Mm -hmm. Because they've eaten it so much that now they realize like, okay, 330. A little too hot, a little dry, you know? Yeah. Which is a great combination of victory and sadness. Mm-hmm. Because, because you're like, I nailed this. But you're just like, I'm too good at microwaving these. Because in all the time that you got good at microwaving these, possibly, potentially. I'm not saying you have to, but you could. Have gotten married. Have figured out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Went two very different directions. <laughs> you could have gotten a life and been happy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I guess so. I, I guess okay. maybe that's the takeaway. <laughs> then the other thing is a um, hamburger that is actually way more what was, depressing. What was your other path, though, that you could have gone down? If you gotten so good at it, you in that time you could have... Oh, found a fruit that you really like. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> like a like a fruit that you like roll with. Like in the amount of times it takes you to really get down to an exact second and yeah. wattage of what this TV dinner should be to come out tasting good. You could have tried mango. You could have tried an apple. You could have tried. <laughs> you could have tried so many things to be like, "Hey, Shit. this is the fruit that I roll with." You yeah. know. Yeah. Because once you once you have that perfect timing down, it means that it has to be the last time you ever have it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're just like, "Wow, this is a science now." Mm-hmm. I can never buy these again. Yeah. Yeah. I perfected this art form. It is time to move on to another medium. Mm-hmm which is microwave burgers. So is it was this like a straight up like 7-Eleven burger? Kind of. Yeah. It did Kinda. not look it it looked like dry and it looked like you, it's finally gotten to the point where the general public is as um exhausted with processed stuff as doctors because it used to be if you went on and on about processed foods you sounded like a health nut and now you're just right like now they finally come out with a couple <laughs> burgers where it's like no no yeah that's not even a good shape you shouldn't have no no burger i'll go out on a limb right now and say no matter process unprocessed grass fed grass finished i don't care if you put butter on any of that no burger should be triangle. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that one was triangle. I'm just saying that the the roundness to corners ratio was off. Let's let's just say no corners, Jen. If you're not going to Wendy's, no corners. If you're not going to that? Wendy's, no corners, all right? I don't want to eat that's a, a baseball diamond, okay? <laughs> I think it's a fair rule. Because Wendy's now, are the only ones that can do corners. Exactly. Now you're messing up. Because Wendy's even had to take a step back and be like, okay, what is the bread to meat ratio? Yes. How yes, many bites are people going to be missing meat for? Yeah. And I feel people typing already that, oh, White Castle has corners too, and White Castle is trash. Okay. I'm not, no, I don't mean to start this war right now. Ooh. I don't mean, I know. I feel Ooh. them coming. I feel them coming. I know. Fighting words. I know. Just, they're not good. I don't like them. I don't, I don't like White Castle. I might have had it too late in life, though. Mm. I never had White Castle until I was like in my mid 20s. And I was like, oh, okay. That's probably the problem. I remember. <laughs> I was in my mid 20s and not on drugs. So. <laughs> Yeah, I I remember <laughs> you you were the one when I moved to Chicago who explained White Castle to me. I did because I had never had it. It's not anywhere else I've lived. Well, see, but it was never where, where I lived either. I I never had it until we were already known each other for a few years. Where I had it for a few years because because you were the one Dude, that I told think me it was moved a to thing. New York. I mean, I knew I knew it existed. I knew what people oh. liked about it. I'd never had it. I yeah, I didn't know what it was. Someone had said White oh. Castle and I was like, I okay, how about this? I thought uh I <laughs> it's gonna sound so dumb. I I'm really so did think White Castle was medieval times. <laughs> Because it just, it felt like it said it all right there. Like, it was like white no, people mean, in a castle. No, you, I mean, you're not wrong. And Medieval so, times is white castle. Yeah, I was like, I. Right, that's like what yeah. white people will do sometimes. They'll go to the yeah. mid, the medieval uh, thing, and it's, yeah. I didn't know they it's, put the name on the head like that. And then. No, but a bunch of honky improvisers love to go to white, <laughs> to, to medieval times for a birthday. They they go all out for White Castle. And you were the one that, uh, the, that told me <laughs> that it was Little Burgers. And I played it <laughs> off like I didn't ever think it that. Was, it was Little Burgers. <laughs> you guys want to go down to Little Burger? I'm just saying, like, because the way. Okay. No, I, 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 we never had them either. I never had them. They, I, I think from where I live right now, I think they have one in like Cedar Rapids. Mm. You know, and this is basically you know near where I grew up, and mm -hmm. you know we we just didn't have them. I knew of them, but I'd never had them ever. Now, are you talking about White Castle or Medieval Times? 
White Castle. I've never been to Medieval Times. Oh, okay. I've, we I've should been go to, to Medieval Times. That'd be fun. We absolutely should. That'd be a good time. I've never been. I've been to things like Medieval Times, like mm-hmm. that are offshoots kind of thing. Like a Renaissance fair? Well, n- not just that. I mean, literally, like the type of restaurant. We went to one uh, in Florida mm-hmm. um, that was Medieval Times, basically, but it was Pirates. <laughs> and dude, it kicked ass. <laughs> really? Because in the middle, instead of it being like the big, uh, you know, like dirt, you know, courtyard thing, mm-hmm. instead it was a big ass pool with a pirate ship in it, and then on the pirate ship were a bunch of trampolines and stuff, and they were all like acrobats instead of like knights, mm-hmm. but they were all dressed like pirates. So they would swing in from different corners and then do like flipping stunts and stuff, and they would have it would be a lot like medieval times where instead of jousting though, it would be this big like sword fight with them doing acrobatics and they would get eliminated one by one. And like you were assigned, like your section was cheering for one of the pirates. I don't remember what it was called, mm-hmm. but it was like super fun to watch. That it was like medieval dope. time. It was, it was fucking rad. I don't remember what it was called. But it was really cool. Oh man. But yes, I've also been to Renaissance fairs. I've been, to, I've been to a couple of Renaissance fairs. So. Mm-hmm. I want to see like an earnest, like a real, like two people have a problem with each other fight at a renaissance fair not a renaissance fair where it's like oh we're we're gonna go at it as part of the performance i mean like people can sign up like jeffrey and sean (laughs) ben had problems (laughs) and so they just start they start throwing hands like full-on like 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 full-on tights on everything but then the hands getting thrown are real. Yeah. Just ye old fight club. <laughs> hey, that would be amazing. Because then it's also cumbersome, you know? Because now you're not fighting in your best fighting clothes. <laughs> nope. You're, yeah. Well, then, yeah, they're like, get on this horse with this lance. And you're like, I've never done this. They're like, well, yeah, you got beef, though. So figure it out. Dude, there's a... I don't even know where this is, but I've watched a few videos that they've made. There's yeah. a fight club in the woods. All right. Uh, elaborate, please. There's, there's, a, there's a fight club in the woods where people go and like it's like amateur boxing and amateur MMA and stuff. And they built an octagon out there and everything. And Oh, God. So it's like proper, was, not just. That was real. It's real. It's like. Oh, God. Yeah. And. Oh, no. And it, you would be surprised. It, it's actually handled really well. And the refs that they get are really good. Like the refs will call it off. Um. Just, Almost like I'm the just, same as uh, the same rules as any like sanctioned event, but I'm pretty sure it's in the woods because this is all legal, right? So and, I'm, I'm just gonna see what happens when I type in "fight club in the woods" <laughs> for Google. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is a purposely undisclosed location. Okay, so how'd you hear about it? Um, you know, you hear things when you're. When you when you talk to people about fights and everybody talks about fights all the time. You you hear you hear about fights. Oh, so this is like some truly underground shit then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And it's really well done. It's actually better done than you would imagine. Cause it's it's have you seen like footage of it or Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway. There was a guy that showed up one time. Nope, nope, what? nope, nope. You can't just anyway. What? Is this, something, is this something I can look up or can you send me? I'll see if I can find one for you. Okay. It, you don't got to do it right now, but yeah. I want to I know what, what Fight Club in the Woods is all about. Yeah, yeah. I think you're going to be disappointed because it's very professionally done. Like, it, the only thing yeah, that... Yeah, but still, just doing a sanctioned fight also in the woods is kind of funny to me. Yeah, yeah. It's got, a, it's got a real air of, like, Tekken to it, you know? Not only does it feel like Tekken, some of it looks like Tekken, because as long as you're in the same... I th- I'm pretty sure as long as y'all want to fight, they'll let y'all fight. And there's this one dude. Oh, like old UFC rules. Yeah. And where could, you could just be, you could be hundreds of pounds different. I don't know how, I, I've seen some weight differences. I don't know how egregious they let them get, but like it does seem, it, it there are some that are very one-sided uh, <laughs> where you have to respect the heart of the other individual. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, like maybe when you weigh them in for heart, they weigh in the same. But as far as bodies, no. Yeah, we our our weight class is is weight. It's by passion. And there was one dude who who you know, especially sorry if this is the one that I find for you to send for you because I've only ever watched two. But uh, he he showed up. <laughs> he showed up like he got the call and he lives in the woods and so he just walked out of his house <laughs> because he had the most comfortable garb on like i'm pretty sure he had on pajama pants and Ooh. then and then slippers <laughs> and so this man is doing his man. footwork in slippers countering punches in slippers real quick i want you to imagine you're in the woods mm -hmm. and then you encounter a man in slippers and you encounter a man in a sweater, pajama pants, and slippers swinging, like, because because well, in that case, in it, when you if you run into a man mm -hmm. in a sweater, pajama pants, and slippers, the best case scenario is he was just teleported from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. It's unlikely, but that is your best case scenario. Worst case scenario is he is about to kill you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you greet him with champ. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it would be a surprise if he was a champion of something. Yeah, yeah. Whatever he's the champion in, the police have not found him yet. Yeah, yeah. And then some of them, I think, are barefoot. Some of them decide to have on some type of shoe, like a boxing shoe or something. But they'll also do them based on i think the discipline so it is kind of like old ufc where now obviously because all of mma having some um knowledge about every single discipline is for the right. best you see a lot less of people um showing up with one discipline as their primary and there are still people that do that in the woods yeah like they yeah, show up and they're like i'm just gonna do taekwondo yeah well yeah because early ufc like MMA wasn't like super a thing yet. No, it didn't like, even it ex exist. Yeah. Yeah. Early UFC wasn't, yeah, MMA wasn't a thing. It was just, it was literally fighting. You were the ultimate fighter. Yeah. You would just whatever, show up and know how to whatever box type of only. fight. <laughs> yeah. Whatever type of fight you wanted to do, you would fight a someone. Mm -hmm. And then there you have it. It like, was now, really beautiful. And now everyone thinks that they do everything. Yeah. It, it was. I mean, beautiful's a word for it. I don't know. If <laughs> well, it just like, some, of, some of those early tapes I've ever seen are like, oh no. Yeah, they hadn't figured if out this, the rules yet. <laughs> if they if they stop this fight a second later, this becomes a snuff film. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> like, I, what I mean by beautiful is that it is cool to watch two actual types go at it. You know. Yeah. And yeah. that's and that's even even remember Pure competition. Yeah, yeah, like the the competition of like, oh, is box because that's what they were trying to figure out in the beginning. Is boxing right better than Muay Thai? Is kung fu real? Like is like all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then jujitsu, which makes won it a lot like a again, again like a Tekken or something. Yeah, exactly. Where you have the character who's doing drunken boxing or whatever, and like you would have that in the original like Ultimate Fighting was just like. A mishmash of ridiculous characters. Yes. Who are brought in from different realms with different styles to mm -hmm. beat the shit out of each other for the entertainment of people who had VCRs. Like, do you do you did you play Tekken growing up? No, not really. I, I played more uh, Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter. Didn't didn't play a lot of Tekken. Oh man. Okay. So, That's why you tend to kick my ass anytime we're in an arcade and we play Tekken because I you're you're way more familiar than than I am. Yeah, but I'm I'm not even the the amount of money and the amount of clout that these new Tekken guys have is is insane. It's actually troubling. But it's, we've watched some of, some of the 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 professional like Tekken are like even though it's just a video game, you are kind of like Jesus. Yeah, and the crowds they'll sell out. An arena. Yeah. Imagine if my thumbs were that good. <laughs> I just want good thumbs. Just give me them good thumbs. Like if you just had good, if you had real good thumbs, you could really make a living now. We're in a different era. If you if you come through with good thumbs, that's money. 
Yeah, it used to remember it used to be a phrase to say I'm all thumbs, and that used to be a bad thing. Now it's a good thing if you're all thumbs. Yeah, you ever heard that one? No, I never you heard, heard that. It's a, it's a it's an old one. Oh, okay. saying you're all, saying you're all thumbs at something means you're yeah you're like not delicate with it or or whatever. So it's, it's an old timey phrase, but now yeah, but now I'm, if shit, I'm if you're all, all thumbs, thumbs at Fortnite, if I'm all thumbs at Tekken, <laughs> if I'm all thumbs at Street Fighter. If I'm all thumbs, I'm a, I'm a millionaire YouTuber. If I'm all thumbs. I got a golden thumb. Can we start a streaming channel called All Thumbs? I, I mean, it probably would be pretty great. I think that'd be great. That'd be very fun. And we could do even like the old games because you forget how, man, people who made games back in the day, so like Namco, uh, uh, Sega, all these places that made games back in the day didn't mm-hmm. give a damn about kids. No. All those games were so hard. Like, so fucking hard. Like past, so hard. Th- past level three, they were like unplayable. They just wanted your quarters. Yeah. They didn't want you to have a good time. They wanted your quarters. It was a shakedown. It was kind of, it was kind of being <laughs> held upside down by your ankles. Yeah. Is what some of those games were. Which I meant to text you actually, speaking of old games, the Nintendo Switch, which we we play every now and then we're together on the road. They just added Goldeneye. <laughs> So I got Goldeneye now for us to. It looks like people about to get popped. Yeah, it's about to. Our next, our next video game video we make for Patreon is about to be fucking petty. I don't even remember how to play. All slappers. Oh, I, I, I'm always bad because it, it's always, especially the the aiming is so horrible in that yeah. game. I'm never used to it because I didn't I didn't own it when I was a kid, but all my friends had it, so I played it a lot and we get used to it. But it's not one I have a muscle memory for. Oh, I am not all thumbs with golden eye yeah in the good way i'm all thumbs in the bad way yeah it is funny how do you remember the nintendo 64 controller and how that was built yeah we yeah we it felt like a prank exactly it's like looking back on it there's so much nostalgia for the cartridges and for the for the controllers and everything but i remember when i got it i got it for christmas Mm -hmm. um maybe like Maybe I don't, I don't know. Maybe I was only a year late, but like I got, I finally got one. I remember that and just being like blown away. And I got like two games with it, and I was just like, my head was, I was losing my mind, right? Yeah. And still, though, when I was holding it, I was like, this doesn't seem right. This is. <laughs> well, there's like two different ways to hold it because you have the three mm-hmm. like prongs like some games you kind of need to be in the middle on the thing the other one you need to be sometimes on two i don't know i, I always had to relearn how to use that controller every time because i never owned one mm-hmm. but but you owned an n64 i i owned a nintendo 64 and then okay i didn't own another gaming system for years because it was just i did not have the money and finally yeah. i won a a ps2 Oh, we talked about this and on then something. That it was a was, video I think we did. Yeah, and then that was the last thing that I owned. How'd you what'd you win it in? What'd you win a PS2 I, doing? It was a, a walk run event or something. And oh, okay. I got the most signatures for like me doing three miles or I I'm, I'm trying to remember what it was. But it was like it was something like that where I needed signatures and I needed people to pledge, you know, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever. And yeah, and I just I just put in work because in my head I was like, this is the only way that I'm gonna get a PS2 yeah. ever. Wow. In my mind, I wasn't even gonna grow up and buy my own. I was like, <laughs> if I ever want one, it it's has now to be or now. never. It has to be this. Yeah. That's an awesome way to get it though. Yeah, and I remember it was like one of my it was honestly like one of my um you know, when you talk about top 100, because I won't put it in the top 10 because that sounds too sad. But like one of my top 100 <laughs> favorite memories. Oh, no. That was my oh, camera. Your, yeah. your camera turning off? Yeah. Um, but one of my top 100 just favorite memories, period. Yeah. Was. In the video, we'll just put the wood guy from Tekken. Yeah. Moko on your, on your On your half of the video, just be, it'll be that guy. The And. <laughs> I, I brought it home and 
I remember it played DVDs. And up until then, my mom and I couldn't watch DVDs because we didn't have a DVD player. Oh, okay. And, yeah. and they were too expensive to buy. And so there was just all these movies that were passing us by. And I remember uh, when my, my mom was so excited for me and how like happy I was and everything that I don't remember if I borrowed it or if she bought it. She must, we must have borrowed it because I don't remember watching it. Maybe she bought it. Anyway, we watched Spider Man on my PS2. Ooh. And my mom was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Thank you for winning this, Josh. And I was like, so proud. I was like, I was like, oh man, this is the coolest, you know? Because it was like, a, even my mom was like, this is pretty dope. You know what I mean? That's a good story. I like that. Yeah, yeah. That was like, I think that was the thing that, that really was a turning point where I was like, where I was like, um, anything to like take care of my mom or anything that my mom needed. I was like, ever, ever like that, like that. And then the so groceries. So you kept buying her, you kept buying her PS2s and she's like, honey, this is not. Yeah, this isn't helping. This uh, is not. You took the wrong thing. From this. I don't need all these PlayStation yeah, 2s. Yeah. But no, I was like, take bringing in the groceries for my mom one time because one time i just surprised her because i was still fairly young i was like kind of little and we actually didn't get that much and so she mm. was getting out of the car and opening the door you know and when she turned around i was right behind her with all four bags that i could not carry like i was just like <laughs> like i was gonna give myself a hernia and and she was like oh you oh like she was it was so heartwarming for her that yeah. i was like oh then i need to do this all the time and and i think that that ps2 thing really was like a turning point where i was like oh yeah i like like i like taking care of my mom and i like um yeah doing my best to like i don't know how you describe it but like Anything I can do to spoil my mom, I'm always very excited to do because it gives me that same feeling as I had with that PS2. Because it it wasn't like it wasn't that bad, but just not. This is gonna sound melodramatic, but like it was starting to it was starting to affect me a little bit of like not even having a DVD player because now I don't even know what anyone's talking about, like. <laughs> Like when it comes <laughs> yeah, to you're missing movies, a lot of pop culture at that point. Dude, yeah. it's like and it's like you don't want to, you don't want to ever, you don't want to ever not have money to the point where you're not from now. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you're so broke. You're from before. Yeah, yeah I get that. Yeah, I get that. So that yeah. so that was my one of my big <laughs> things. Yeah, where I was well, like, that's so, oh, that's so great too because especially in that era of like the PlayStation, PlayStation Two, like I, like that was the, you know, there was like a decade there where it was constantly talking about, you know, having video game systems like that were ruining children, mm -hmm. you know, and and there was you know putting time limits on it, and making sure your kids weren't going to be psychos or whatever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the fact that you had the complete opposite experience where your mom was like this playstation 2 fucking rules yeah that's <laughs> it's like it's really great that you had the opposite experience to that in every way yeah yeah that absolutely. your mom was like i'm so glad that you got this yeah yeah because <laughs> i mean oh tony hawk pro skate i was playing all of it i was like I was up on all of it. PS2 by then. was a good system. PS2 was a really good system. And it's that easy. was one. Some of my favorite games are still on that system. Yeah, it's easy to get nostalgic over it, but I think genuinely what also makes it great is someone pointed this out to me um, last month. Actually, it was while we were in Denver. A friend pointed out to me that one of the reasons we hold those games in such high regard is because it was our last time owning games. The, oh, like physical copies. Physical you mean? copies, because the 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 thing that could happen. I'm not saying it's will. I'm not saying it's like like some conspiracy theorist thing. But I'm just saying like what could actually happen now is that if something happened to like a database or a server or you know whatever with a gaming system, you might not be able to play a game that you own. Yeah, yeah, because especially now, like you know. 
I'm even behind a little bit because I have a PS4 and, and not a PS5. And it's like, I think I own three hard copies, but I own like a shitload of games mm-hmm. on it. Like, yeah, if, 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 if the computer decides I don't get those anymore, that's, that's the decision. And updates. There were no, there were no updates. It was like they made a good game and then they put it out. I, I think it's also, that was the perfect generation of where games started getting more, I guess more specialized. I'm, I'm not sure what the right word is, but it's like they, they weren't, they were getting, you know, that's when we started having like the dual stick stuff. Like you started having, ha- you know, doing, you know, using one to move, one to look around kind of stuff was in that generation. And I realized if you miss that generation, people who didn't play games during that generation and you give them a game now, they freak out. They have no idea mm-hmm. how to handle games now because mm-hmm. I've done that. Where I didn't realize, I'm like, oh, if you didn't grow up playing games and you <laughs> try to sit down at a game now mm-hmm. as like someone our age. Your brain almost can't comprehend it. Yeah, yeah. And so much of it stems from like that era of console. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So it's like, if you didn't get used to it, because that's like you know, like Jess even she gets if anything first person or any game that has a like a camera that moves, she gets sick if she watches it. Yeah. Because she didn't play those games then. It's yeah. Like you have to. Because yeah, I'm like yeah. Why wouldn't you get motion sick? I've just done it for years. Yeah. No, I'm with you. You know, I'm with you. Well, dude, are you ready to open up the mailbag? Give me one sec. We're about to do that. Hi, Jess. I heard her coming. Do you need to walk through quick? Because sometimes she... I've got a fun story you guys could talk about. Well, we're about to wrap this episode up, but if you... What happened? Have you ever heard of a milk and molasses enema? No. Woogie boo. Woogie boo is what he said. (laughs) A milk and molasses enema. Yeah, that sounds like you know when they like they they clearly run out of names for like specialized IPAs, <laughs> and they're like, oh, this is this is demon <laughs> anus fist, and you know what I mean. They just start putting words together. That's what that sounds like. Yeah, it works. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's what I was cleaning up before I came home. That's what I was cleaning up before I came home. She just said. <laughs> Okay, thanks for stopping by, hon. You're welcome. I love you. Love you. Your job's gross. <laughs> I'm glad you do it, but it's, everything's bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> should we should we keep that in the episode? Let's uh yeah. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's uh <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> Open up the mail bag. <laughs> go try to eat nachos now <laughs> yeah sorry, sorry. <laughs> Ugh, this has been a strange episode all right here we go um let me see open up the mailbag this is our email josh johnson show at gmail.com you can email us questions or stories or topic ideas and we love to read them there here's one um this is from Kaylin, uh, and the, the title is called Storytime Request. Hey, Toontown and Squeaks. Uh, I'm a longtime listener, first-time emailer to the show. I've probably listened to every episode about three times. I will never get used to that. Yeah, that's amazing. People have been telling us that for three years. I'll never get used to it. Uh, y'all are my favorite thing about Thursdays. Well, as per usual, I was re-listening to an old episode, episode 48, Little Joshy is Kidnappable, uh, while changing my cat's litter, and Josh mentioned an old improv troupe he was kicked out of. I don't believe Josh ever told this story, and I was hoping he would indulge the listeners. Uh, on a side note, Josh singing Vindicated at the end of episode 125, our last episode, uh, Don't Meth With Crack, uh, is my new favorite thing to say to myself alone and unprompted. Never fails to make me smile, LOL. Anyway, hope y'all are well. Truly cannot express how much this show means to me. See y'all next Thursday. Thank you, Kaylin. That was a very yeah, lovely email. That was dope. Um, I yeah, will... this improv troupe. Have, I don't know if we've really talked about it. Yeah, I will I will talk about it, but it is longer than... In order to really okay. tell it, it is longer than... Uh, okay. Yeah. So we, let's put that on the docket. Maybe maybe next episode. Should we try to dig into 
Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Yeah. Because I probably we could probably do because we both did improv. There's probably improv stories we could fill an episode with, maybe. Mm-hmm. Do something like that. Okay. So I I know that's always sometimes annoying that we're we we ask it we get asked the thing and we're like, cool, we'll talk about it later. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm with <laughs> but, you. But okay. So we'll we'll get to that. But thank you so much for that email. Um, and then this one here. This is from Gabe. Um and great podcast with a great coast. Great host the title says uh, hey guys love the podcast but i just wanted to ask why isn't it called the logan nielsen show i mean josh is funny i guess but logan is obviously superior <laughs> i mean compared to logan josh is barely even there but they spelled it like bear in that pun that you oh, love oh god I'm just kidding. Parentheses, maybe. I love both of you, and I love the show. One million out of 20 jangles. Sorry about your brain, King. <laughs> Gabe, and then I, I love they give a pronunciation key, and it just says, pronounce like the word gay. Then you add a B sound. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Gabe. I appreciate that, because I know this episode, two is going to get some hate because I talked a lot, and some people hate that. <laughs> So some of our some of our listeners are not a fan of me listen being a part of the show, but uh, so I appreciate that. Yeah, and thank you so much, Gabe, and thank all of you. Thank you for listening to the Josh Johnson show. We had a great time recording. I hope you had a great time listening. Um, all that I ask of y'all in in this episode is if you enjoy the show, just tell one friend. Just yeah. tell a friend about it. Uh, so we can hopefully make more people laugh in the new year, come out every Thursday, wherever you get your podcast. You already know that if you're listening. And if you're looking for Logan. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Logan M. Nielsen. Uh, and if you want bonus stuff that we do, because we make some videos, we do some side podcasts, uh, we, we do a bunch of goofy stuff over at our Patreon, patreon.com slash Josh Johnson Show. Uh, and like we mentioned at the, earlier in the episode, we do monthly live shows. Um, so come join us. We tell stories we've never told in the show before. We interact with people uh, and have a, a generally chaotic time. We literally just finished recording <laughs> January's before we started recording this. And uh, it was one of the more off the rail ones we've had, yeah. I would say. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty chaotic, but uh, it's, it's a whole different vibe over on that. And uh uh, and we're also we're touring this year so keep an eye on all the links are down we put so many links down there they all lead to important information yeah how's that thank you all so much for listening i hope you have a great rest of the day and i hope you have a great weekend and i hope you have a great trip to australia josh thanks man yeah it's gonna be great one assumes i'd like to i'd like to assume there's so many spiders there don't don't do that though <laughs> Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel. Hit the bell notification because apparently it's the only way YouTube will tell you that something happened. And just tell a friend. That's the biggest thing you could do. Just tell one person in your life that you like, maybe you don't like, that this video happened to you. We release the podcast every Thursday on all the podcast apps, so you should find us there and subscribe on those and comment and leave reviews and whatever on all of them. And also, if you want bonus stuff, you can join our Patreon, patreon.com slash Josh Johnson Show. We have bonus podcasts and videos and stuff there, and uh, we'd love to see you.